Aesthetic Diversity in Theatre Introduction Hello and welcome. My name is Daniel Moraz. I'm a theatre director and a teacher of directing and acting. In this video, I'd like to introduce the idea of aesthetic diversity in theatre and offer you some possibilities for furthering your own viewing and reading. This is a very large subject, and there are many ways of presenting the material I'm about to share. To keep things clear, I'm going to speak from my own experience of creating original, aesthetically distinct theater. Aesthetics. When I say aesthetics, I mean what a piece of theater art looks like and sounds like, and how it makes us feel. Aesthetics refers to the form and effect of a performance. The form of music, for example, can be described as differently organized sounds that proceed over time. But diverse kinds of music use time very differently and consequently have very different effects on us. Reggae, Western classical music, hip-hop, and South Indian Karnatak music each present a different aesthetic. Likewise, in cinema, innovative directors have different signature styles. Directors such as Martin Scorsese, Andrei Tarkovsky, Sally Potter, and Robert Rodriguez all make films with a very particular form, and as a result we call them auteurs, the French word for author. Because theatre isn't distributed as widely as music and film, different kinds of theatre aesthetics are not as clearly defined or as well known. So, spending a little time with contemporary theatre's auteurs can be an illuminating and empowering experience. Diversity. What I mean when I say diversity is a healthy variety of kinds of theater that offer us the experience of a truly wide range of forms and effects. We often forget that the dominant aesthetic of commercial theater in Anglo-American culture, or normative theater, is only one of many possibilities. Our default assumption on hearing the word theater is usually of a play that unfolds on a stage that we sit in front of, upon which has been installed a decor that looks very much like the set of a television situation comedy. On this set, actors recite in a manner approximating everyday behavior and relate a story in a way designed to make us empathize with the fictional characters portrayed. The whole event lasts about two hours and is punctuated by an intermission, during which the audience can buy a drink in the theater lobby. While there's nothing wrong with this setup in principle, the normative style creates a very similar form and effect from performance to performance. Everything winds up looking as though it were directed and imagined by the same person. While we don't get to see it very often in Canada, or indeed North America, there are lots of other possible forms and effects that theatre can have. Possibilities The particular transmission of theatre practice I received runs from the well-known Russian director and teacher Stanislavsky to director Vsevolod Meyerhold to actor Yuri Zavadsky to Polish director Jerzy Gratowski to Italian director Eugenio Barba to my teacher Richard Fowler a Canadian actor, director and teacher. The heritage of this lineage of artists emphasizes two things. Actor training, focusing on how stage presence is created, and directing that creates metaphorical staging that captures the audience's imaginations and lets them participate in the creation of meaning on stage, rather than literally illustrating a story in a televisual way. The other training transmission I've received comes from the Chinese martial arts, or wushu, and the Chinese theater arts, or Siju, and the Chinese Taoist ritual arts, or Dao Jiao. These three traditions have been linked historically, and they all use the same preparation methods for the body that are called Jiben Gong. The material I'm going to share then combines two aspects, a European, modern, and Western one, and a Chinese, classical, and Eastern one. While these two aspects represent important parts of world theatre culture, I'd like to suggest that you also have a look at other videos in this series that explore other areas of theatre studies, from indigeneity to gender complexities. Practical Ideas Presence 
I'd like to share some practical activities that you can try right away. The first one is learning to stand and move in a present way. Imagine our Paleolithic ancestors living on the African plains. They are watching both their children playing and the animals that are going by. While the skittish, jumpy zebra and deer don't have a visceral effect on them, the slow measured gait of the lions that could instantly leap into action catches and holds their attention. We seem hardwired to respond to the presence created by withheld potential energy. So as you do the following, think of the amazing control exhibited by a stalking cat and by the explosive, surprising, and beautiful movements it can manifest in an instant. Stand with your feet together. Engage your glutes, the muscles in your butt. Drop your lower ribs so that they are over your hips and tighten your belly. Breathe deeply through your nose, allowing your belly to expand gently on the inhalation and tighten on the exhalation. Slightly bend your knees so that they are not locked. Look outward with a wide, level, and diffuse gaze that engages your peripheral vision. Imagine sending your mind out into the space around you, embracing the space behind you, above you, and beneath you. From this position of potential energy, put your hands on your hips and step out with your left foot, leading with the heel. Put the heel down silently at a distance where your body doesn't move. The motion of your leg is isolated. Your support leg should be slightly bent at the knee, with the knee moving straight out over the toes. Keep your hips parallel to the ground. Transfer your weight to the left leg, gliding your whole body forward. The whole left foot gradually makes contact with the ground from heel to toe. The right foot stays in contact with the ground, and the right leg extends fully as the weight comes forward. Slowly bring the unweighted right leg forward, leading with the heel, and repeat the stepping pattern. Remain as perfectly level to the ground as you can. Breathe evenly and slowly through your nose. Keep your vision diffuse and your mind expansive. See what you feel like after you take 100 steps in this manner. Once you've developed the strength, coordination, and concentration to take 100 steps easily, you'll have started to cultivate real potential energy in your body. The next phase will be add to add contrast to your walk. When you walk, there's a moment during the weight transfer when both the legs are together, one bearing weight and the other empty and floating. Pause at this moment and practice being able to suspend your otherwise even motion. When you can pause without wobbling, look out diagonally on the floating leg side. Focus your vision to a single point and put your mind into the space you are focused on. With your free leg, quickly leap diagonally into the space you are looking at. Land completely silently and maintain an even breathing through your nose. Land like a cat, with every part of your body under control. Return to slow walking, and every few steps, surprise yourself with a dynamic jump. Practice the jumps and the perfect recovery on both sides. Try practicing this 20 minutes a day for 100 days. You can film yourself on day 1, day 33, day 66, and day 100. See how you've changed. There's only one of a great number of exercises you'll need to fully cultivate your presence, but even just this simple activity will begin to transform you, and all of your actions will begin to contain more potential energy and presence. Practical Ideas Solo Composition now we're going to compose a short sequence of movements. Once composed, this sequence will constitute what we call a physical score. It's a basic unit for an actor, the way a brick is a basic unit for a builder. Please find 10-minute images of different athletes in action. Fencers, soccer players, gymnasts, it's up to you. Print them out and arrange them one after the other in an order you like. Learn to assume each position and hold it so that you are stable and confident that you are reproducing all of the details. Practice moving from one position to the next, adding a single step between each so that you step directly from one position to the next with no loss of potential energy in your body. 
Practice until you can move smoothly and evenly from position to position from memory. Now decide which movements are slow and even and use diffuse vision and which movements are rapid and dynamic and used focused vision. Once you've made these decisions, practice them without improvising so that your physical score is repeatable and your understanding of it gets deeper with each repetition. When you can perform your score with confidence, consider what you are imagining as you work. For each action, write down what you imagine you are doing. You can imagine very unusual and unrelated things. Your personal associations don't need to be logical. They can be as free and fluid as a dream. Now, as you practice, make the world you imagine more and more precise without changing the physical shapes that you are making or your dynamics. You are building a bridge between a concrete physical reality and a world of your own imagining. When you can do this confidently, film yourself and observe what you see. What is happening in this small performance? What do your actions evoke for an observer? Are there moments where your presence leaks? And how can you fix them? Following these procedures will allow you to experience the process of making and perfecting a concrete series of actions, which is a first step in composing your own piece of theater that will have evolved an aesthetic all your own because you began your work from your direct experience of your own body. You need a teacher. My experience is that to learn to make art, you need a teacher, an artist with a living practice who has the ability to facilitate your development and who transmits his or her insights and experiences through the teaching of concrete technique. I believe you must initially learn to see in great detail how other artists express themselves. With this vision will come the ability to express your own ideas. To begin this process, here is a list of people and approaches you can look up and perhaps even study for yourselves. I hope this has been a helpful introduction, and I wish you all the best in your future theater studies.